Lyndon LaRouche had the following remarks over the weekend. The British Empire's demented drive for global thermonuclear war, most recently using the theater of Ukraine as a fulcrum, has been stymied over the last 48 hours. But the stalemate emerging from the April 17th four-party Geneva Agreement is highly unstable. The British Empire's war drive will either be derailed by removing Obama from office, or will again escalate rapidly towards thermonuclear confrontation, this time with direct involvement of the British Empire in such a gambit. LaRouche continued, The entire operation so far is now stalemated, which means the next stage is, the British Empire moves in, which means Australia and other points in the Middle East, and trying to pull the United States in. But if they can't pull the United States in, it ain't going to work. Without the United States, they cannot start a Eurasian war. So it's an interesting situation. That's the stalemate. The British are not in a situation to declare war unless they can get the United States to push it through. And there are blocks right now. LaRouche then took note of the pressure Obama is coming under because of a Florida judge's decision to compel the FBI to release 92,000 pages of documents relevant to Saudi financing of activities related to 9-11. And he underscored the strategic significance of the Keisha Rogers campaign for the Senate from Texas, which can blow open the entire situation in the Democratic Party nationally to good effect. The crucial issue, which Russian President Vladimir Putin has used to gum up the works on the war drive for the moment, LaRouche explained, is that the neo-Nazi squadristi, which the British and Obama intentionally put in the driver's seat in their illegitimate Ukrainian government, must be disarmed and demobilized as part of the Geneva Agreement. Putin put something in very clearly on the question of the conditions in terms of Ukraine, LaRouche said, that there has to be no thuggery continued in Ukraine. That's where the block is. And Putin says, there's no giving in on that, that these guys have to surrender their guns. The eastward expansion of NATO up to Russia's borders continues, with reports of the possible forward basing of some 10,000 American troops in Poland and similar deployments. In his four-hour April 17th press conference, Russia's President Vladimir Putin denounced this eastward expansion of NATO, which occurred despite early 1990s promises from the first Bush administration that this would not happen, and commented, If we don't do anything, Ukraine will be drawn into NATO sometime in the future. We'll be told, This doesn't concern you. And NATO ships will dock in Sevastopol, the city of Russia's naval glory. Putin also issued a blunt warning. Let me remind you that the Federation Council of Russia gave the president the right to use the armed forces in Ukraine. I very much hope that I will not have to exercise this right, and that, through political and diplomatic means, we will be able to resolve all the pressing, if not to say burning, issues in Ukraine. Those remarks of Putin's have been widely covered in the West, but what has been almost totally blacked out are his comments at the same press conference warning that the U.S. NATO ballistic missile defense system is even more threatening to Russia than NATO's eastward expansion. I'll use this opportunity to say a few words about our talks on missile defense, Putin said. This issue has no less, and probably even more importance, than NATO's eastward expansion. At the expert level, everyone understands very well that if these systems are deployed closer to our borders, our ground-based strategic missiles will be within their striking range. If they deploy these elements in Europe, we'll have to do something in response, as we've said so many times. We'll do everything to guarantee the security of the Russian people, and I'm sure we'll succeed. LaRouche took note of these developments and concluded his remarks by stating, This is what goes on the record as of now, as spoken, here, at this point. That defines what we're saying is the issue of war, as of now. We now recognize we are a factor in this process. And what I'm doing is a factor in this process of determining peace and war issues. LaRouche PAC policy committee member Bill Roberts struck a similar tone in his written statement on the occasion of his declaring candidacy for the U.S. Congress April 19th. Nations not beholden to the transatlantic system, such as China and Russia, who refuse to cooperate with the desire of Obama and the British Queen to implement green and other forms of population genocide, are now encircled by civil war, regime change, 
terrorism, and the increasing buildup of ballistic missile defense and thermonuclear missile systems, including the deployment of the USS Donald Cook this week into the Black Sea. Do not be naive. Neither Russia nor the American people have any strategic interest in starting a war right now. This is the deployment of the U.S. military by a complete tool of desperate international financial circles to gain the advantage of nuclear first strike capabilities. Russia's military and civilian leadership has repeatedly warned that there is a certain red line at which actions toward fulfilling this aim of a thermonuclear upper hand will be confronted militarily. We are headed straight into a war that no one can survive, and so far no one in the Congress has lifted a finger to effectively stop. We must change that. Nothing is set in stone if we act as Promethean beings. Defeating treason and reviving the commitment to the U.S. Constitution means defeating the green agenda and committing to an economy driven not by the pursuit of speculative monetary values, but created through scientific and technological progress, characterized by achieving breakthroughs in thermonuclear fusion. Join me in escalating the fight to impeach Obama now and revive the true American legacy building the future. Join LaRouche back and organize with us to effect this change. No one else is going to fight in your stead. And we are calling on all patriots to rally to the flag with us. <laughs>